and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the integrated audit and specifically now we're going to be looking at forming the opinion we're going to form the opinion so what is an integrated audit just to make sure we are all on the same page is when it's when you audit the financial statements and issue an opinion and at the same time audit the internal control over financial reporting and issue an opinion about that as well this is what we called an integrated audit in the prior session we looked at how to plan the engagement using the top-down approach test and evaluate the design of internal control over financial reporting test and evaluate the operating effectiveness of internal control over financial reporting this is what we did in the prior session and we did all those four steps to reach our ultimate objective in an integrated audit and that is to express an opinion on the company's internal control over financial reporting this is exactly what we want to do now we're getting to our goal to our objective forming an opinion on the effectiveness of internal control over financial reporting for the opinion i'm going to break it down into three sub lecture first i'm going to discuss the type of internal control deficiencies because when we performed step three and four we could have found some deficiencies control deficiencies so we need to know what type of, of control deficiencies we can have and who should we report those deficiencies to now i'm going to do this separately why because i believe it warrants serious attention to understand the different type of control deficiencies once you understand the different type of control efficiencies and who do we report to then we would look at the actual report and i will have two sec two different section for the report one for the issuer which is publicly traded and for the non one for the non issuer which is report slash communication so in this session i'm going to focus on the type types of internal control deficiencies that we would find and who are we going to report those to at the end we'll look at this but it's important to understand the different types of control deficiencies. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Discussing deficiencies, we need to be familiar with what is a control deficiency, what is a material weakness, and what is a significant deficiency so you need to be familiar with those three terms because why when i'm going over the report or the communication i don't have to redefine them again although they are defined in the report themselves but i need to talk about them here and how do we come up with what is considered material weakness what is considered significant deficiency so you need to understand once you understand them then it's easy to go over the report now you can relate an example to what you are looking so what is a control deficiency well any problem in the design of or the operation remember we test the design or the operation so any problem with the design of operation that 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 does not allow management to perform to reach to reach its objective which is what function functioning properly to prevent or detect material misstatement on a timely basis so simply put control deficiency is something is not working properly in the internal control over financial reporting either in the design or the operation now what is what is material weakness now this is basically i put it in red to kind of emphasize its seriousness now you have a serious issue it's a control deficiency or many of them deficiencies over financial reporting for which there is a reasonable possibility that material misstatement of the company will not be prevented or detected on a timely basis now we do have a deficiency here but there is a reasonable possibility now what do we mean by reasonable possibility if you remember the cont loss contingency rules that you learned in intermediate accounting if not that's fine remember when we have a contingency it could be remote uh, reasonably possible or probable here what we're saying is there is a reasonable pos reasonable possibility there is a good chance that this deficiency will not uh, will not prevent errors from happening 
Okay, if it's probable, it's higher. If it's not remote, we don't consider it if it's not remote. But here, it's reasonable, reasonably possible. Then we consider this as a material weakness. It's a control deficiency that's considered material weakness. That's the most serious one. So it's important to know once you see material weakness, material means, it means important. Now we could have a control deficiency, but it's considered significant deficiency. I have this in dark blue. I'm not really sure if you can see it or not. I'll have, prefer to have it in yellow, but it, won't, it would not look good. Control deficiencies over financial reporting, but those are less severe than the material weakness. So they are significant, but not material. Although they are not material, they are significant, it's important to let management or people who are responsible for the oversight of financial reporting to be aware of them. So we have control deficiency. We need to know what control deficiency is. Something that's not going to allow you to perform your function properly, but that could be that could constitute a material weakness or it could constitute a significant deficiency or it just could be a control deficiency. Now, the question is, how do we determine the significance of the deficiency? So simply put, how do we determine whether this is a material or a significant deficiency, material weakness or significant deficiency? Here we use qualitative as well as quantitative factors plus judgment. So I'm not going to tell you, for example, this is exactly, now we're going to look at some red flags, but it's always a judgment. What is that judgment based on? Well, you have to evaluate the deficiencies that you identified individually and in combination, because individually they may not be significant, but if you combine them, they could be significant or they could be significant individually. You have to look at the magnitude of the severity of the possible misstatement because of this deficiency. So if we have this deficiency, what could happen? What's the magnitude? What's the size? What's the severity? What's the pervasiveness of this deficiency? We could look at the amount involved, the account involved, because different accounts are more important, the volume of the activity, well, the more activities we have, the higher the possibility something could go wrong. If we have one transaction, maybe we could just focus on that transaction and control it. But if we have many transactions, that could be an issue. But also those transactions could be automated or not. We have to look at that as well. Also, we have to take a look at whether it's reasonably possible it's going to fail. Remember, we talked about reasonable possible. That's important. It's, is it going to fail? Now, we don't qualify the probability of misstatement. We don't say, for example, there's a 60% chance we're going to have this misstatement or 70% chance. We don't quantify this. We just say, is it reasonably possible the control would fail? And we have to keep in mind, although the control failed, it doesn't mean a misstatement would happen. And we don't take this into account. So simply put, we cannot say because uh, no misstatement occurred because of this deficiency, therefore, it's not severe. Well, the deficiency is there. Whether a, mis a misstatement happened or not, we don't take that into account. So no misstatement has to occur for the deficiency to be judged severe. Give you an example. Let's assume um, for every customer, we have to check their credit before we sell them on account. Let's assume we fail several, several times to check the credit, and this is a serious deficiency. Well, but all the customers paid. Well, no misstatement happened. Nevertheless, it's considered severe. So no misstatement has to happen to count it as whether it's a serious or a severe control deficiency. Also, the possibility of misstatement exists if certain risk factor exists. Now, again, we're talking about different accounts, different amount, different exposure. We have to take that into account. For example, if we're looking at the account, we look, have to look at the account type that's affected by this deficiency and the relevant assertion that we are looking at. For example, revenues, we worry about overstatements as well as assets, liabilities and expenses. We, Our concern is completeness and, or understatement. We look at the frequency of error. How many times this error is happening? Susceptibility to loss. Judgment estimate required for the transaction. Those are all risk factors that could tell you if there's a deficiency there, the possibility is getting greater and greater. That's a serious one. We have to look at the interrelationship between controls and among deficiencies. So if there's one control, is it limited to one department, one one uh, 
one part of the company or is it going to affect other controls? Is there is an interrelationship between control, many controls and many deficiencies. Is it pervasiveness? Also, interrelationship could be dealing with whether we have a manual versus automated. For example, a manual control may be limited to one area, but automated control could affect many areas or vice versa. But we have to know there's a difference between manual and automated control. Again, one by itself may not be significant or relevant, but when we put them in combination, they could be severe and material because they could have an interrelation, interrelationship between controls and deficiencies. Also, we have to look at the potential loss of the deficiency. Again, here we're talking about the amount. Basically, the same thing I said on the other slide, just framed differently. And the importance of the deficiency when it comes to the financial statement. How important is it? How much does it affect? Would it affect our going from uh, net, net, net income to net loss? Does it affect revenue? What's, what's the importance of it of the financial statement? Now, there are factors that we are considered red flags and they are considered material weakness. Like those are serious, serious stuff that we can identify some of them. For example, if people in charge of governance like audit committee, internal control, board of directors are not exercising strong oversight, uh, that's a material weakness. We have some serious problem. Any fraud conducted by senior management, that's pretty serious. Any financial restatement due to fraud or error, because we have to restate, no, we might, we're looking at some serious issues here. Any material misstatement or misstatement missed by the internal auditor. If the internal auditor is not catching those, basically it goes back to here, they, they're not exercising strong oversight. Those are some serious weaknesses. Now, remember, when we talked about testing, we said we test the design and we test the operating effectiveness. Therefore, the def some deficiencies could be related to design. Some deficiencies could be, could be related to the effectiveness of the internal control. So let's go over some examples. And we're going to start with significant or material weakness in design. Well, that's design. For example, the design of internal control over financial reporting is inadequate, or the internal control, IT, IT controls, whether it's application or general, they're also not effective. For example, there's no proper segregation of duties. That's in the design. By design, by, de, by design, we have some deficiencies right there. Design over significant account transaction is an, inadequate, so we don't have proper segregation for certain transactions and accounts lack of proper documentation for the design or poor documentation of the design that's considered a problem in the design itself maybe not enough awareness of the design of the internal control over financial reporting across the organization remember when you're learning about the design you're talking to people if you find out they don't really understand it and they're in charge of the internal control over financial reporting well, that's, that's a poor design. That's part of the design. It means right from the get-go, they're not doing a good job because they don't understand it. And if there's no method to report internal control deficiency or deficiencies in a timely fashion, that's a problem with the design. The staff lack qualification or training, right? Right from the get-go, they're not well trained. There's a problem with the design. And if there's any absence of the monitoring process. So th these are all, we can say, design deficiencies. Again, we have design and we have operating deficiencies. So what are some examples now of significant or material weakness in operation? No proper safeguard of assets. Now, now we're dealing with actual operation. Are we protecting our assets so they are properly counted? No reconciliation. We're not preparing reconciliation of significant account. That's part of the operation and we're not doing it. That's important. The staff lacks independence and objectivity. So when they're working, they're not really doing the best job they can, or they're not taking into account the, the benefit or the, or the spirit of the internal control because somehow they are not independent or objective because they, maybe they have some undue pressure from upper management. Not providing, misrepresenting information to the auditor. That's part of the operating deficiencies. Now we're talking to them, we're working with them. An actual failure of either general or IT controls, the, they're not working properly, or a high degree of deviation or failure or exception rate. Now, since we know about control deficiency, significant deficiency, and material deficiency, the question is, okay, we found them. What do we have to do? Who do we have to report them to? So I'm going to break down into how, what to do under non-issuers and under issuers. Starting with non-issuers, what do we have to do when it comes to management and people who are in charge of governance. Well, for non-issuers, 
any control deficiency is reported to management and writing. So we have to report it to management and writing any control deficiency. If it's, a, if it's considered a significant deficiency, it's also reported to management. If it's a material deficiency, it's also reported to management and writing. Well, that's easy. All deficiencies are reported to management and writing. How about when it comes to people in charge of governance? And we did not specify for non-issuers. This could be the board of directors, could be the audit committee, could be someone and the higher up. Well, we do we report control deficiencies to them? Not necessary, but we report significant, de deficiency, significant deficiencies to them. That's important. Remember, this is the red flag. This is like important. Well, if it's important, we're going to report it to the people in charge. Material deficiency, we also report it to the people in charge as well. The question is, when do we communicate those deficiencies to management and uh people who are in charge of governance. Well, for the material deficiencies, we have to report by the report release date. Significant deficiencies by report release date. Control deficiency within 60 days of the report release date. Now, when it comes to issuers, again, we have three types of def control deficiency, three types, significant deficiency and material deficiency. What, do we have to report control deficiencies to management and writing? And the answer is yes. In addition to that, we inform the audit committee. Remember, issuers, they have the audit committee. Remember, here we are dealing with publicly traded companies. So we do report to them and inform the audit committee that we did report this. Significant deficiency, the same thing. We report to management and writing and inform the audit committee. Material deficiency, same thing. Notice, management always, they should know about everything because they are running the company. They should know about all of those. What about people in charge with governance? And here specifically, we're talking about the audit committee. We also report to them significant deficiencies in writing because those are important. They need to be aware of this as, what, as well as material deficiency. We have to give it to them in writing. Now, the question is, when do we communicate to management and audit committee when it comes to issuers? Well, prior to issuing the report on internal control for control deficiency, prior to issuing report on, on internal control for significant deficiency, prior to issuing report on internal control for material deficiency. So pretty straightforward. Now, now I hope we understand what's a control deficiency, what is considered significant deficiency, what factors do we use, what's considered material deficiency, who do we report it. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna look at actual reports now. We're gonna look at actual reports for issuers and for non-issuers to show you the actual reports. And what I like about the report, it summarizes the whole process because in the internal report, we're going to basically go back and restate and summary exactly everything, everything for an integrated audit, because that's what the report is. Summarize everything. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to feel guilty about this. I'm going to have two separate recordings, one for issuers, for, one for non-issuers. Although they're very close to each other, it's okay to see it twice. It's going to help you prepare for the exam better. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, work MCQs, look at additional resources that's going to help you understand the integrated audit. This is an important topic on the CPA exam. They test you on it. So be prepared. I'm always here to help you. Good luck. Study hard. The CPA exam is worth it.